Spiders. Demons, your drunk Uncle Steve. Fear is everywhere, especially now seeing as we've entered the time of year where goths can freely walk the street without harassment. Well, less harassment. I'm speaking, of course, about Halloween. And in the spooky towers of what culture in the haunted city of Newcastle, we, the gaming section, have made a pact with Satan and... Look, it's Halloween and we just needed to tie a list in somehow and we just kind of all forgot. So, yeah. With this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com, here with Peter, Ben and Scott, aka the backing vocals to my soprano, and this is our list of our eight personal scariest moments in gaming. Hello everyone, Ben from WhatCulture here, and my runner-up is Final Fantasy VII, The Start. What the fuck is all that about, hmm? Uh, let me tell you. You see, I'm no good with horror games. Even titles that engage in periods of subtle tension are enough to give me sleepless nights, and although I'm grown up and a big brave boy now, I was significantly more cowardly as a child. Now, to be fair, there are some fairly spoopy moments in Final Fantasy VII. Sephiroth burns down Cloud's childhood town, murders Aerith, and impales a giant f***ing snake, but not before slaughtering everyone in the Shinra building and leaving bloody streaks all over the floor. It was not any of these. It was actually the introductory cutscene. You know, the one where Aerith is looking at flowers and there's glowing green stuff and that music's playing. Coward, mate. Couldn't hack it. And my actual most scariest moment of all of the times? Resident Evil 2. Also, the start. Back to my childhood again now. In fact, I should really be paying you all for a breakthrough like this. And it's time to talk about Resident Evil 2 on PS1. My cousin had a chipped PlayStation. Boo, naughty cousin, that is not cool. And once upon a time, I visited his house when he wasn't around and was given free reign of his room. And of course I was morbidly curious about a game called Resident Evil. How could I not be? And how bad could it be? I should have stopped immediately. I was terrified by the intro cutscene at the petrol station, and then as soon as I took control in Raccoon City itself, that was the end for me. Because when I say took control, what I really meant is moved around and continuously opened and closed the menu. I couldn't work out how to shoot my gun and was eaten by a load of zombies. Couldn't sleep for a week. Ruined me. Hello, what culture's Peter here? My honourable mention, the raptor cutscene, The Lost World, Jurassic Park. So let me start by saying that while I've never been quite as yellow as Ben Potter with his Final Fantasy VII opening, what the hell, I wasn't exactly brave at age 11. The Lost World Jurassic Park for the PS1 was actually a pretty fun, if largely unrelated, adaptation of the 1997 movie, which allowed you to play as the dinosaurs as well as the humans. Hell yes. One of the best levels was of course rampaging through InGen as a Velociraptor, but unfortunately, to get there, you first had to make it through this cutscene. The whole thing is presented as found footage from the head cam of a man dashing through the undergrowth as a bunch of people try to reassure him over the radio and keep him moving. Glancing at the slightly kooky motion tracker to the right, we can see a couple of red dots slowly closing in on his position and his desperation really starts to set in. After crying out, the voices on the radio erupt into frenzied panic and in a matter of seconds the guy tumbles to the floor and screams out in a way that has never ever failed to freeze my blood solid. And my scariest moment, The Locker, Condemned Criminal Origins. Condemned is a forgotten classic. A true masterstroke in the survival horror genre, it stands up amazingly well for a 360 launch title. It fuses nerve-wracking exploration of dingy abandoned buildings with terrifying melee combat against junkies and lunatics who'd shiv you soon as look at you, and some of the best designed detective mechanics I've ever played. And it's this last little aspect that really gets into your head in one of the game's later levels. Discovering a lifeless corpse stuffed inside this locker at an abandoned school, what a nice setup, you're asked by forensics expert Rosa to do the usual and send her some snaps of the crime scene. You're used to this by now, standard practice. Wide angle shot, check. Close up shot, Jesus f- he's alive! This was something you'd almost been expecting throughout the entire game. The number of times you'd taken a photo of a supposed corpse and expected it to spring into life is more than you could count, but at this late stage in the game, you'd sort of convince yourself that if the devs were gonna do this, they'd have done it by now already. It's a super cheap shot, of course, but I needed a crash trolley either way, so hats off. My spooky second place is the medical pavilion panic in the game I will just not shut up about. 
Bioshock. Rapture is not exactly the most fun place to be. Locked in the leaky tub of a city, fathoms below the surface, you've got to deal with mad hat splicers, burly large fathers, and the threat of trench foot due to all the rising damp. The very few moments of peace you do tend to get in the game is when you've effectively murdered everyone around you, which is exactly what you'd expect after putting down all the slug junkies in this area of the medical pavilions. Spying a tasty, if definitely radioactive looking plasmid, you saunter over to inspect your prize. Then the room fills with gas and... nothing? Oh, I thought there'd be- OH JESUS! GET AWAY YOU NASTY THING! It's a jump scare that gave me a severe leak in my pipes, stuck with me throughout the rest of the game as to whether it would happen again, and makes you wonder with scenes like these, who needs seeing enemies? <laughs> uh. My number one personal scariest moment is the last level from Echo the Dolphin. What is it with me and games that have water in? Anyway, Echo the Dolphin, as many of you know, is a lovely romp through the ocean as your one and only bottlenose bud, Echo. He solves puzzles, fires lasers out of his heads, travels through time, you know, the standard stuff. But the game hints that there's a great evil behind all of these sea shenanigans. And when you leap back in time to meet the evil vortex race in question, there's a good chance you're going to release a little floater. This horrible circuit board hell is accompanied by dour music and one of the most out of place and terrifying boss battles ever. How we went from this to this is beyond me, but it still chills me to the core to this very day. So this is Scott, and for my two, my runner-up's going to be a little bit different. It's not necessarily a horror game, but I'm going to go with Batman Arkham Knight, the section where he plays Jim Gordon. No one knew what the hell was going to happen at this moment. There comes a bit in the story where we don't really know what's going to happen next. One minute you're playing as Batman, the next the camera just jumps, and all of a sudden you're Jim Gordon investigating this weird, mysterious-looking facility. What could be going on? What's in there? Who's in there? It seems like something's going to jump out, but you never really know when it's going to happen. All of a sudden you look to the right, and it's bloody Batman! He's right there! And you have the whole, oh god, oh Jesus, oh, oh it's you. And that's the best Batman style response that we could ever have. It puts us right in the shoes of every single character that's ever done the whole, oh Jesus Christ, what's going on? Oh, it's you. It's brilliant. And for my number one, it's a game from 2016, Dark Souls 3's weird looking bone spider water corpse things. What in the name of the flying f***ing titty Christ are these? You just come across them and they're hanging upside down in the water and they look like corpses and you think, oh well that's alright, I'm just going to walk past them, nothing's going to happen. Oh no, no, they're weird, half mangled, terrifying, living cobwebs. I don't know what the hell they are, but they come out of the water and they jump at you, they're huge. I mean, literally, me and my girlfriend screamed the place down when these things arrived, and I couldn't have killed it faster. I literally was screaming, kill it with fire, stabbing it as fast as I possibly could. Whatever these things are called, from software, you guys are geniuses because this thing kept me awake for weeks. And that's our list. What gaming moments leave you a shivering wreck like when your mum tells you the store was out of Munton Dew? Well, let us know about them in the comments section below. And if you want to come be the ghost at our feast, then you can do so here or on our respective personal Twitters. As always, I've been JulesForWhatCulture.com along with Peter, Ben and Scott, and we'll spook you all soon.